Hi, I'm John Williams with Space Intelligence, and I am standing on the rim of the Behringer Meteor Crater, which is one of the largest meteor craters in the entire world, but also the best preserved in the entire world. The Apollo astronauts trained here, NASA still tests and does experiments here, and this is where really Earth meets space. So we send rockets to space, and we explore space, but this is when space comes to us and hits us hard. So we believe that the meteor that made this crater here came from the asteroid belt between Mars and Jupiter. The tonnage was like 300,000 tons, and the resulting impact and explosion was like 20 megatons of like a thermal nuclear weapon. Incredible destructive power. Now the meteorite we've determined has, is made up of nickel and iron the main two things but much of it was left was strewn over miles near this crater now I'm gonna show you the largest piece that we have recovered and that's still together so this is the Holsinger meteorite which is the largest fragment left of the 150 foot long meteor it broke away from the original meteor in the atmosphere and made its own separate landing. Now the reason it looks all bumpy and it's got all these bumps in here is because this is part of when it was vapor when it was starting to be vaporized when it hit the earth. Now as you can see on the top you can see these like reflective surface. This is part of the iron and nickel composite. Now there's more iron in here but as you can see with the the different colors that is the nickel. So what's cool about this meteorite is still this is the largest fragment that we have left completely intact and it was found by five guys and a mule and it weighs over a thousand pounds and they had to drag it back a few miles away all the way to this place so we could have it here and you could touch it it's really really amazing so when this crater was created it was 1400 feet deep and this is a little model that shows you you see we're right here and then looking out into the crater it's much deeper on this model here you see, now, right now, the crater is only 500 feet deep and about three quarters of a mile wide. Of course, back then it was, but it was much deeper. And over thousands of years, since 61,000 years ago, the crater has been filled in by erosion and winds from, you know, sand being pushed back in. But this is how it was back then. It was much deeper, but still, this is one of the best preserved craters in the world. It was only until 1960, the 1960s when they proved this, me this crater was actually a meteor crater because for the years that this crater was known by humans, they all thought it was like a volcanic eruption and this was the remnants of it. Now a guy named Daniel Berenger, he believed that this crater was a meteor crater and he actually dug these mine shafts all across the meteor crater, especially in the middle, trying to find if there was a huge meteorite buried in the middle of the crater. Now for 27 years he tried, but he couldn't find that iron meteorite. But even as the science community didn't believe him, a guy named Shoemaker, he who was part of the nuclear tests in Nevada that made huge explosions, he came out here and he realized that the shape of the, of the crater is exactly like the nuclear bombs he had been exploding. And he was able to prove that this was a meteor crater, even though no one else believed him. And that was back in the 60s. So this crater played a key role in getting humans to the moon. You see, NASA brought their early spacesuits here for the Apollo program to test if they would survive on the rough and rocky surface of the moon, which this crater simulated perfectly. And what they found is that when they were had astronauts walking around, they actually puncture holes in the arm because these sharp rocks poke through the material. And NASA learned that they needed to make their spacesuits much stronger, which much more with much more durable material. Which is very important but they also brought the apollo astronauts out here like neil armstrong and a bunch of the other guys who eventually walked on the moon because they wanted them to become somewhat geologists because on the moon they really wanted to learn about the composition and what actually made the moon so when they came here they were able to learn about which rocks were special and which ones aren't you know how to find older rocks compared to new ones because they didn't want them bringing back rocks exactly like these from the moon and that's how the astronauts were able to bring back some really unique rocks which actually taught us how the moon formed which is really cool now one more cool thing if you look out into this crater it looks pretty barren however except for the mine shafts in the middle but over to the side of the crater right over there there's a few shiny pieces of metal and can you guess what those are? It's an airplane wreck. 
you see this guy who was flying over the crater with the Cessna, he didn't realize there was a bunch of hot gas that was trapped here and it started to stall out his engine. So all of a sudden he, he was coming up and now he was falling. So he tried to turn and, and get more speed to come out. But eventually his plane stalled out and he crashed. I think he had two people on board. Both of them survived but with serious injuries and they had to be carried up the 45 degree slope of the crater, which was not easy on stretchers. But the remnants of their aircraft continue to be a problem because pass passing flyers over here would actually kept continuously point out there's an aircraft wreckage. So then for months they got a thousand reports saying there was an aircraft wreckage when the people had been recovered. So the people who own this place, they went down there, they cut up the wreck and they threw most of the remnants down the mine shafts that were left there. So there's a Cessna down in those mine shafts, but a few pieces still remain and they are the reflected pieces you can see over there. So this is the Behringer Meteor Crater out here in Winslow, Arizona. Completely barren of most civilization, but it's just an amazing piece of history. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Maybe click the subscribe button and check out my other videos. Have a great, great day. Our mission is to make you space intelligent.